Welcome back to another video, guys. My name is Jack. I produce weekly content based around video production. Today, we're jumping into episode number three of the Shot Cut Masterclass, jumping into the filters section, all of the advanced video effects, the advanced transitions, breaking down everything that you can actually do in terms of visual manipulation, all the actual sort of VFX heavy stuff. Without further ado, let's explore the filters section of, I about ideally said Premiere Pro, <laughs> Shot Cut Masterclass, we're doing it. Now, the full Shotcut Masterclass is linked down below in the description. Shotcut is up on my screen. We are carrying on with our, you know, composition with our project that we've done. Like I said, we've already done two episodes so far, so that has gotten us to this point. That's me by, right there with my friend climbing up a castle. This is uh, one of the clips we've imported so far, but we're gonna be jumping into the actual visual effects. Now, before we actually jump into those quickly, let me just go ahead and just trim this over a little bit. And uh, I just wanna make a full sequence, right? So I just wanna bring this over. And, uh, you know, just pop that right there and um, just chop this down a little bit. So it's actually bring this over. Actually, we go to the point in the clip where I'm trying to jump up. There it is. Okay, so this is actually me and my friend just literally, literally, uh, goddamn, what the fuck am I doing? All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this filters section and that really is it so in the past couple episodes we've gone over the tools and shortcuts and overall familiarizing ourselves with the program itself today we're going to be jumping into the filters section so the filters section actually is literally you just can't do anything with it until you've imported a clip now once you've imported a clip you can actually highlight that clip and then the filter section will become active okay so if you have no clips in here import a clip and it will become active and to actually create a new filter all you got to do is go ahead and press add filter and it's going to pop up with the most used filters so show favorite filters first and uh, you know you you might actually think you've got a limited amount of stuff but you just have to switch it from the show favorite filters which is default it's default on that to the show video filters then you go ahead and just click it and uh, you know you've got all the video filters and um, it is pretty interesting the video filters they give to you. Some of them are actual just presets, and then some of them you actually have customizability as well, which you would hope for. So I just wanna start breaking down some of these filters right here. So let's go ahead and select one, like the vignette. Vignette's a pretty cool filter. Um, of course, it, it looks pretty disgusting right there. It looks, it looks a little bit too much. What I wanna do is put the feathering on full and the radius on um, pretty damn full as well, but just about about like that or about like that. Cool, so we've created a vignette, and then I'm gonna make the opacity not so much, right? So we've created a vignette, just like that, just by kind of importing this, and then kind of messing with the variables. And just like that, we've got a vignette. And uh, you know, um, the playback speed of Shot Cut is unfortunately one of its biggest downsides. Unfortunately, as you can see right here, I've got an <laughs> extremely powerful computer upgraded two months ago, and uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the playback is still Still pretty laggy. It's unfortunate. It's definitely one of the biggest downsides the shot cut do have, um, you know, especially with these video filters. It's pretty unfortunate, but that's just what it is. Now, we've got the vignette right there. Let's go ahead and mess around with some other ones, okay? So let's go ahead and just do sketch. Why not? There's some more stuff like a sketch, for example, where you can actually do like a cartoon kind of um, outline type of thing. And I'm actually gonna remove the vignette as I add this sketch. We can actually scroll along to see that you know, it's pretty cool cartoon background. And you're, you're probably understanding the video effects right now. We're gonna get to the transitions in a second and also some color grading stuff. But right there, the video effects are pretty simple, okay? All you gotta do is pop them on and then you're gonna have some sort of control. But there is, is stuff like the mirror, which traditionally in other video editors, you would have some sort of variables uh, and control over it. A mirror effect in this is literally just a mirror effect. There is no actual um, variables to adjust. And some of these uh, filters, like I said, are just kind of presets like that where there's no uh, customizability you can really do to it. But there is some cool stuff you can do as well with, uh, for example, size and position when you actually want to create an effect to uh, be a little bit more complete. For example, let's go ahead and find like a wave. All right, so here's a wave. A wave adds this weird border to our effect, which is not nice, it ruins it, to be honest. Look at these little these little dots around the side. Now, if you wanted to actually remove these annoying ass dots, um, uh, you know, hold on, let, <laughs> let me just go ahead and undo that. Um, I just messed up. Um, let me just delete that, add it again, I messed up. 
wave. Say you wanted to remove all these little impurities, if you will, it's actually pretty simple how you do that. But uh, you know, on first glance, it could be a little bit intimidating. All you'd want to do is actually add another uh, filter. And let's go ahead down here and actually just try and find the size and position. So there it is, that's size and position. This is more or less the scale and uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. So we actually click that and add it. And we have the ability to um, actually start dragging it out via these guideline helpers, if you will. Uh, around the side and we can actually hold and just start dragging that up which actually drags it away from the side so you actually start erasing those impurities that were around the side and now if we give this a play we've just got a pretty smooth wave effect without all that little nonsense around the side now like i said the preview was unfortunately pretty shocking unfortunate that is like i said a, the biggest downside of of shot cut hands down but um you know just by simply pulling this out a little bit, you know, just by making it a little, uh, a little bit bigger, we've kind of been able to zoom in right there and, uh, you know, erase those impurities around the side and create a much more convincing full effect, something that's not, you know, going off the side or anything crazy like that. Um, now, let's go ahead and just try one more effect just to make sure you guys understand how to actually adjust stuff and make sure you're familiar with the filters section. Just go ahead and scroll through here. All right, simple. We'll get a glow. Now, some of these are either gonna have one variable or two. For example, right here, we got the blur variable and uh, you know, it's looking pretty cool. Hell yeah, all right, sweet. So just like that, we've added a whole bunch of different effects. Now, how would we actually go about doing some transitions? That's what I wanna uh, you know, have a look. Transitions, again, super easy. Shotcut is very catered towards beginners, so you've probably picked up a pattern at this point, which is that everything is really, really easy, almost too obvious, so. Um, to actually add yourself a transition, there is gonna be two different ways to do it, and they're both as effective as each other. You could either go over to the left-hand side or the right-hand side until you get this little control bubble that pops up, and it's pretty obvious, you see it right there, control bubble, bubble on the left, control bubble on the right, and you can actually just click and hold and just start dragging that in to create one of these angles right here. And uh, you know that right there is gonna be a fade in, aka a transition, and just like that, it's gonna fade in. So you can actually go over here on the side, and uh, again, try to find that and just bring it over. And uh, you know, you've actually added a fade into video and a fade out. You see, we got a fade in and then a fade out. And just like that, we've actually added it in, you know, a matter of seconds, to be honest. And uh, if we actually wanted to do this uh, a little bit longer of a way, we could actually just go plus to the video filters and just go fade in video. And uh, you know, just like that, if we drag that out, it is now gonna add a nice smooth fade in to the video. And uh, in terms of other transitions, Shotcut is very limited. Um, that's pretty much the most effective transition uh, you can do. By all means, tell me in the comments if you've, uh, you know, if you know some more effective custom transitions and stuff like that. But by all means, the fade in is uh, more or less, more or less their most powerful, more or less their most powerful transition. Now, moving on to some actual color correction, some color grading. Uh, it's kind of interesting, the color grading. Uh, I would have hoped for more, I really would have, but all you gotta do to actually select it, again, go to filters and then go to color grading. And um, they are interesting, shall I say that? I'll say it's interesting, all right? You can kind of customize some stuff. Obviously, it just gives you a shadows, a mid-tones, and a highlights. And uh, you know, you can actually look up a couple um, more in-depth tutorials on how to use these tools right here, but more or less, these are really good to actually grade towards uh, a certain color scheme, if anything. Now, I'm not, I'm not the best with color, uh, color grading with these sort of uh, you know, dials, but more or less, all you wanna do is actually um, do a nice contrast of colors a lot of the time works. So if you push towards, let's say a blue um, in your highlights, maybe on your midterm, uh, mid-tones, you might want to push towards the opposite direction to kind of even it out a little bit and kind of create like a sepia. Is it sepia? I'm not too sure. I'm using the wrong I'm using the wrong words right now. But more or less, if I had to be real with you guys, the reason I've left the color grading to, to the uh, end of this video effects and transition section is because it's not great. I would have liked to have a whole complete video just based on the color grading, but it's really not great. Like I'm, uh, I'll be real. Uh, and for me, I am kind of shooting in the dark when I'm actually color grading um, using Shotcut. I have not been able to, to, to get a grade that actually looks nice so far. Um, all of them just look kind of amateur. By all means, tell me if you guys are a little bit better at this. Um, but you see what I mean? It's, um, it is a little bit tough to actually, to actually use, use this tool to kind of grade it in a convincing 
way, unless you do sort of little light things like that. Like you see, if we turn that off and then turn it on, that's actually done a bit of grading, but just kind of in a, in a, in a pretty simplistic way, um, in a pretty subtle way. And I actually like that. Like, that's funny enough. I'm, I was just saying how I haven't been able to get a decent color grade, and now I've just created one that I'm actually pretty happy with. So that's the before, that's the after. <laughs> That's such a jinx on myself. I, I for real, I'm actually kind of happy with this right now. This is pretty minimalistic, pretty simplistic, pretty subtle, but I like it. And that is what a good color grade is. It's not over the top unless you, you know, you're color grading some S log or some V log footage, which is a mass difference, obviously, because uh, it's gray or whatever. But that right there is a pretty nice color grade. And the subtler, the better, I think. The subtler, the better. It's just a nice kind of addition to the uh, the footage. And this is drone footage that I'm watching right here. But that right there is the video effects and transitions, part number three of the Shotcut Masterclass. I'm about to get started with the titles and effects. Loads of amazing titles and effects in here. Um, you know, there's a bunch of presets as well, which is great. So you can save yourself a bunch of time animating stuff. And uh, all that is coming in the next episode. So if you reach this point of the Shotcut Masterclass episode three, I'll see you in the Shotcut Masterclass episode four because you're clearly enjoying it. Sweet. See you in the next episode.